This video is sponsored by RenderHub. RenderHub is an impressive platform for artists looking for a place where they can get inspired, find 3D assets, and lots more. Stick around to find all of the amazing stuff that RenderHub offers artists. So, for over 30 years, Pixar Render Man has quietly powered the visuals and cinematic history of films and animation, from the Jurassic Park, Toy Story, and even some modern blockbusters, with its legacy being that of precision, photorealism, and robustness. And we all know that Render Man is considered as one of the leading industry rendering engines. And with the release of Render Man 27 alongside the update of Render Man 27.1, Pixar has yet again crashed previous records, as this is now considered as one of their most significant render man updates in a decade, as this now ships with game changing features for both animation, visual effects, and to a large extent this would also influence the future of rendering. And for those who might be wondering why this exactly matters, I think it's safe to say that Render Man isn't just a renderer. This is an engine that possibly laid the foundation for cinematic CGI workflows. And historically, Render Man basically relied on its CPU first path tracer, which was called RIS. And this has been the backbone for countless future films and visual effect projects. Render Man's strength has always been the image quality, robustness, and it has been well tested as a pipeline tool that stands the test of time and a lot of studios actually trust it. And with today's hardware, where everyone seems to be hopping with GPUs and with GPUs now fully unlocked by CUDA alongside access to multi-core CPUs, the industry has been demanding for speed without compromise. And Renderman 27 simply delivers just that. And at the core of Renderman 27 is the XPU which is the hybrid CPU slash GPU render engine that has actually graduated from an experimental feature which was only used for looks and dev to a final frame picture status and RenderMan 27 was actually used in a couple of Pixar films and one notable one is the most recent release of Toy Story which means that artists and studios can now use this to produce final cinematic renders as this combines both the power and resources of the CPU and GPU to deliver high quality performance and performances can go from 2 to 10 times faster iteration than what you had with the previous RIS and with the multi GPU support alongside CPUs this now means that large scale scenes can now be rendered easily and with this, Renderman 27 also introduces a suite of powerful technology features that extends both creative control and pipeline flexibility. And this includes interactive denoising, as with its machine learning powered denoiser, artists can now see near final quality while iterating their scenes and design. And this would accelerate lighting and look development dramatically. Renderman 27 also adds support for deep EXR and advanced compositing output like maths and holdout. And these fundamental improvements make layering CGI into live action films far cleaner and more predictable. Stylized looks are now fully supported in XPU, which gives artists painterly and MPR looks without external passes, making it easier for artists to create stylized content and control how the lines, the hashing, the painterly look and also the tuning of their renders. If you work with Material X, Material X Lama integration from Industrial Light and Magic arrives in early access which enables modern standardized shading graph that makes moving assets between tools have less friction. And for those who have no idea where you can get Material X, you can simply go over to the link in the description, it's going to bring you right here and we've talked about this one on the channel before as AMD is offering a good number of Material X resources and you can find these ones useful. Interestingly, if you work with geometries, lighting, shading, right now there is an extended OSL filter support and you can now get better volume, glass scattering, well nested instances mesh lighting and a ton of other cool things in Renderman 27 as all of this brings XPU closer to feature parity with RIS which is their previous rendering technology. And for those who like to read up on these or possibly you'd like to check out Renderman 27 you can simply go over to the link in the description that bring you right here where you can see it. For those who like to see the release note right here you would see the release note of Renderman 27 and you can go through and see some of the incredible new features that are now available with 27. If you go all the way up, you'd also notice that we've got Renderman 27.1, which is an update just a couple of days after Renderman 27 was released. And this has to do with bug fixes and a few other interesting stuff that you might want to see. Renderman 27.2 is already 
on the unreleased build and all of these are building based of the amazing features that are now available with renderman 27 and if you like to get this you can simply go over to the renderman website click on try slash buy and from here you'll be able to try a full non-commercial version of renderman which means that you can use this for your personal project. This gives you 120 days with full functions, unlimited copper engine and artist friendly plugins which you can work with. The only thing you don't get with the non-commercial version is the stylized looks. Other than that, you have access to all of the full functionalities that Renderman offers. And of course, if you're thinking about getting the plugins, you can actually go ahead and check out for the plugins, see all of the supports that they have. And for those that work with Blender, you can also get the Renderman for Blender 27.1 plugin update and you can simply click on the download button to grab it. And for those that might be wondering, how you work with this is pretty simple. First off, you need to install Renderman, which is installed as a product itself. It makes sense to log in because this would require a username and a password for you to actually get anything going. So create one within the website before you download so you can use that when installing the product. And once you're done installing the product, you can now install the plugin for your DCC app. In this case, we're using Blender. And so all we need to do is to grab the add-on and we can load the add-on right into Blender. To install the add-on for Blender is pretty easy. Drag, drop into your viewport and simply click on OK to install it. Then you can go over to edit, go over to preference to confirm that you've got the add-on installed. Next thing to do is to click on the bugger menu, save your preference and close the window. At this point, I would recommend that you go ahead and restart Blender or you can get your entire system restarted. Now, once you have that restarted right here inside of Blender, what you need to do is to simply go over to where you have your renderer. If you click on the drop down, you now notice we've got render man. So if we click on that, you see all of the settings that we need for render man is right here. So for example, if you're thinking about doing the IPR, which is the interactive preview rendering, you can actually do that by clicking right here and doing the IPR right on the viewport. So once you do that, automatically Renderman will kickstart the rendering and you can now preview this right here within the viewport. Of course, there are a lot of things right here, which we've already talked about in a previous video. And for those who like to explore that, you can do it. For those who are thinking about asset, light, stuff, all that, this comes with it. So if you go over to the add menu, you can add some render man lights. If this is what you're looking for, they've got different kinds of lights, different kinds of light filters, different kinds of volumes, different kinds of quadrics. You can find them there. And in terms of presets, they've got a lot of presets. So you can just simply go through all of this preset. You can actually click on the preset browser, open that up and preview all of the preset that this comes with. And there is a lot from materials all the way to fore and hair down to some stylized stuff. You will definitely find a good number of things here. Outside the materials, you also have some environment maps, which deals with indoors, outdoors, and also the light rings. So these are very nice, cool stuff that you can work with. One thing which you need to know is if you're working with Blender with the recent plugin, of course, there's going to be an update to this one. But if you're working with Blender with recent plugin, if you go over to renderer and you click on the dropdown right here, we have the XPU, which is actually one of the most celebrated stuff. You notice that we've got CPU and then GPU. So it's not like the both of them are tied together. And that brings us to something that doesn't really work right here. So for Blender, XPU doesn't really work as advertised. Other than that, every other thing works and you can simply go ahead and explore it. Now, for those who are thinking about Maya, how can this work with Maya? Working with Maya is literally one and the same with what you have with Blender. How you get this going, once you have the software installed, automatically it installs the add-on for you. So you can simply go over to Windows, go all the way to Settings and Preference, go to Plugin Manager, and if this pops up and you type in the word Render Man, you should be able to see the Render Man for Maya right here. If this is not loaded, simply go ahead and turn this boot on and these would automatically load it when Maya opens. And just like we have with Blender, we also have the same thing here. So in this case, we still have the very same model that we had in Blender. And if we go in there, how we can work with this is also really simple. So for this one, all you need to do is to go over to Renderman right here. And if you click on the IPR, which is the interactive preview render, automatically this pops up a whole new window and initiates the rendering. So for Blender, you can also access that if we go back to Renderman. If you like to access that, you can do that by clicking right here and doing the IPR to it and automatically that would pop open and start rendering as well. This simply uses the camera. So we would actually jump right into the camera, lock this, bring this over to a point like so. Let's zoom all the way out. Let's pop this back open and you can see that 
rendering. So if you move around, you'd also notice that automatically it moves around with it and you can see that working here. Now, one thing which a lot of you guys may want to see for tools like Maya might be the viewport render and viewport render exists there. So I'm just simply going to discard this and jump back into Maya. So right here in Maya, if you like to get the rendering happening within your viewport, you can simply do that by going over to the renderer right here and turn on Renderman. This would automatically load into your viewport and you can now preview with your viewport just like you could do with Blender. One of the issues or one of the things which we talked about that doesn't exist with Blender is the XPU. But here in Maya, you can access that. So if you simply go over to Renderman on the menu, go all the way to where you have your render settings. If you go over to Renderman tab, go over to the features and right here you can change it. So the renderer is set to Rees, we can change it to XPU. So once we change it to XPU, we can turn on CPU and GPU and automatically you would notice that it's using it. You can tell that the rendering is a bit faster than what we had before. If we'd like to turn on the noising, the interactive denoiser, we can have that as well and you would notice that we're getting that denoising happening quickly. At this point, you can now go in and play with the lights however you want. If you'd like to explore with some of the assets, you can also go ahead and explore with some of the assets and this applies to the rest of the DCC tools that Renderman 27 currently supports. And of course, you can simply go ahead and explore with all of them. And speaking about exploration, RenderHub has a ton of things for 3D artists. So whether you're thinking about getting inspired by some of these amazing artworks that you find here, or possibly you're looking for 3D models that are currently on sale, which you can simply come through and check out as there are amazing, cool 3D models that you can get right here. Or possibly you're looking for free 3D models that you can grab. RenderHub does have some very interesting things for you. More so, if you're considering selling your own 3D models, you can actually come through and sell them right here. And one cool thing with RenderHub Marketplace is when you go over to the marketplace, you'll find out that there is a ton of asset types that you can explore. So whether you're looking for quality 3D models or you're looking for models that are print worthy, scanned models, textures of various kinds, materials, all the way down to 2D game assets and some amazing sound effects, brushes and tools and reference photos, RenderHub has all of these in stock. At the same time, you can search for stuff based of compatibility. So maybe you're looking for SketchUp files, you can simply click on SketchUp and only SketchUp files will be displayed. If you're looking for Blender related files, you can find Blender related files. At the same time, you can search for Maya related files and so much more. At the same time, RenderHub is currently doing their Winter Fantasy version 4 render contest with a price pool of $1,900. And of course, if you find this interesting, you can simply go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here where you can explore it. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.